Paula. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm very well. This is the fifth time we try to do this. <laughs> um, those of you who are watching, uh, this has been a huge journey for us because uh, doing all these techie stuff and recording Zoom and all this stuff, like we, we did so many times and it didn't turn out. And this is the final time, the fifth time that we got this. So uh, cross our fingers that all goes well. But uh, we did do a testing and uh, it should be good. So today I'm very excited to um, invite uh, Paula. Uh, she is a very sweet, passionate uh, lash lift um, for the Caraplex, right? And the uh, um, KLI lift uh, all the way from Vancouver. And she was the one who trained me. And today I got her to come on Zoom and do a demo for us for a brow lamination. Is that right? That's right. We're going to do a DIY brow lamination for you to do at home. Just, uh, I'm not sure if you, are you open back up yet? No. Uh, no, we're still locked down here in Toronto. Yeah. So just for those, uh, I know we're kind of open back up here, but just for those ladies that cannot get into the salon, it's, it's nice to be able to do stuff at home yourself. So we're going to show you today how to do a DIY brow lamination right in the comfort of your own home. And it's very easy. Very I'm excited. So today it will be you showing everyone as well. I'm going to do it along with you. Yay. Yes. Okay. We can jump right in. And then while we're working and processing, we can, you know, talk about a few things and, yeah. you know, and get in there. So, okay. I'm actually going to remove my glasses for this. So I just kept, I took everything off my brows. Ignore my nails today. I have my manicure for later. <laughs> okay. So... With the brow lamination or with the Caraplex, we have a few options for kit sizes. You can get a whole big lash lift kit like this that will do lash lift and brow lamination with all your accessories that you need. You know, we have a y, a y comb with a pick, some lash lifting forms, and then we have your adhesive. Step one, two, we have a little um, lash stain. This is uh, the cleanser for your lashes and brows. This is a special bonder serum that goes in. This is basically like Olaplex for your hair. So this is what repairs and strengthens your eyelash and brow hair on a molecular level. This is what makes this system so unique than what anything that's out there. So you can't damage your lashes by doing this. Uh, what do you mean by the neck? Sorry, what's that word again? Uh, the, the oh molecular like so it's going to go right into the very inner like structure of the hair oh. like right where the molecules are so you know we're going to be repairing from the inside out basically okay and then it uh, comes in here too is this fabulous heat mask um that you can just warm up in the microwave for like 30 seconds and and you know pot on because we do use heat with this system um anything that like if people buy some systems on Amazon or eBay. Or... I have this. Is that okay? That's perfect. Today I'm actually going to use something else too, um, because I don't have a microwave here. I'm going to use this. I just get them disposable steam masks from Amazon. So anything you can use anything. It just needs to be um, stay warm for the length of time that you're processing. Um, so we, yeah, so we have this size kit. If somebody was interested in lash lifting as well. Or we just make up brow lamination kits with the only the excess uh, the products that you need. So we and we've two kits. We have one that comes with a heat mask for about two thirty, and then we also have an option if people have their own heat mask at home that they don't need to purchase a heat mask. And I think that lamination kit is one nine nine, and you get a lot of treatments out of that. So. Saving your stuff. So with the package that I've got, how many treatments can I get out of this package? Oh, wow. You could get like 30 treatments. Okay. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot in there. Um, okay. So you could do it every four to six weeks. So um, it depends. Well, I say 30. It depends on the brow hair. And if somebody has a lot more brow hair, obviously they're going to use a lot more product than somebody who doesn't. So I won't uh, delay you guys. I'm going to jump right in. Um First things first, if you are laminating your brows at home, you need to make sure that the, there's no um, burns or like any skin diseases or disorders or anything. You need good, healthy skin because we, at the end of the day, we are putting a chemical process on there. So you need to have, 
you know, no, you know, don't get waxed and reburnt and then go and laminate on top of it. So just nice, healthy skin. Um, and then the first thing, first things first, we are just going to grab this fabulous lavender and um, aloe gel. The smell. The smell is so oh, nice. It smells amazing. And every time I use this on my clients, they even get it straight away. They're like, ooh, I smell lavender. And it's, it's more of a gel consistency. So it's, it's fabulous. So this it's is going to help. Hmm? So it's not drippy. Not drippy at all. It's fabulous. It smells so good. So just give your brows a little cleanse. You don't want to over wet them now either. So, you know, make sure you cleanse all your makeup off. And then you can just dry that off. So you want to make sure they're nice and dry. Okay. And then you can give them a little brush up. So the idea today, what we're basically doing is you're softening the hair on your brows to make it more pliable so that you can style them and keep them and brush them up like this, um, you know, for that more fluffed up, brushed up look, or if you've any gaps, you can kind of manipulate your hair over. So basically it's just allowing you to style them. It's like a, like a Brazilian blowout basically for your eyebrows. Okay, so. First things first, you're going to get a little um, dish or a little, where's my little, you can get a little dish or a little ring cup or anything, anything just to hold your product in. So for the brows, you don't need to put, use the uh, glue, right? Or the adhesive? No, I, you know what? I never use the glue for the brows. You really don't need it um, because if somebody has a lot of hair and they feel like they do want to move it up, it's just, it can be harder to remove at the end. And if somebody's using too much, it can actually prevent the product from penetrating. So really it's, it's optional, but it, it's not, it's, it's really not that necessary. You just want to make sure you're getting in there with all the layers of the hair so that you're getting the underneath layers too, if you if you have that much brow hair. I don't, unfortunately, I wish I did, but it's not my case. Um, okay, so. okay, so for the step one, we're gonna mix two products together. This is your step one perfecter, which is gonna debond the hair, and this is the bonder ingredient. Now this you wanna shake well, um, because it will separate, there's oil and water, so you want to give that a good shake. And then we literally just want one little drop. So just one little drop. So I like to drop this in first in case you put in more than one drop. Um, let me see. Just, you know, that way you can take it back out. But if you put in your cream first and you put in too much of this, it's not. So if someone uh, feels that this is like a Caraplex uh, treatment and it protects the hair and they put in a lot, what will happen, Paula? Um, no, if you put in it too much, it's going to actually prevent um, the product from taking effect. So really that drop is what's going to protect your hair from any damage from the, you know, the debonding lotion. Yes. So too much of it will actually prevent it from lifting. Well, it's a two to one ratio, right? But let's say if it's my uh, eyebrow, then it's probably be one drop because I don't have a lot of hair. But if like for a male or someone with thick eyebrows, they can add two drops and just ratio that two to one. Exactly. Perfect. So if you're adding two drops, you're going to use four pumps of your step one. If you have a lot of brow hair, if you're like me and you don't have a lot of brow hair, you could do two pumps of this to one drop. So the ratio is two to one. Okay. Um, so we're just going to give that a little mix around. Does it matter what we apply on with? Not, no, not at all. You can use anything. I like these little microfiber brushes or you could get these little dough brushes, like lipstick brushes, anything really. But um, yeah, just as long, or if you have a little brush at home, anything, you just want to get that product on there. Actually, so before I go ahead with this, I'm actually just going to, because I'm using this, I'm going to open it so it starts to warm up. Okay. Um, or like I said, if you're using the mask, the heated mask, just pop it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. Or if you're using one like Kelly's, just plug it in and have it warming up. Okay. And just apply on um, generously? Yeah, just apply generously from root to tip. 
and you kind of just want to manipulate it in the shape that you're going to want your the hair sitting but just get it on as nice and quick and i like to you know brush it upwards from the root I find with the, my hair is so uh, stubbornly coarse that the ends of the hair right here is what keep poking down and it's, it's hard to lift it up. But um, later when, after I do this, it's gonna be more easier to manage is what you're- uh, oh, Exactly, doing. you just, if you put a bit of gel on, just brush it up, put a bit of gel on and it'll hold. Yes. So it's like mine, they won't stay up if I don't, if they're not laminated, they just won't really do a whole lot for me. Sorry, I'm taking my, it's, it's so weird actually with the, the camera. I'm like, it's in slow-mo, so it's looking funny for me. Okay, I have that on. All you're gonna do is get your plastic wrap. Everybody has some in their house. Just and regular one. Just regular? Yeah, plenty regular plastic wrap. And just put that on there tightly. And then you're gonna grab your heat mask, whichever style you're using. Again, it doesn't matter what you use, but it just needs to be consistent heat. Um, and when you say heat, like people should feel the heat, right? It's not just like a, like a cooling or a warm kind of feel. It, you yeah. should feel the heat. Exactly, you should feel the heat. Obviously you don't want it too hot that you're gonna burn your skin, but you need to feel it. You need to feel a bit of heat there. Okay, and once that's on, um, let me put this on, your heat. There we go, that feels nice and warm already. What happens if someone to, who will not, uh, what happens if someone don't use heat or not enough heat? It won't be effective, it won't, it won't lift. Um, you, and we, we want to use the heat because it controls the processing. Like I said, there's certain systems out there. So again, just to note if anybody's watching this video and they have a system that they've bought that's not this system and the try use heat would do not do that because you will damage your lashes or your brows. This system is specifically designed to use with heat and we use the heat because it helps control the processing and the heat is what makes that special, um, this, this uh, special ingredient active. So this is why we use the heat. But again, this is not in your traditional systems. It's very unique to what we're using today but this is what will help strengthen. It actually makes your hair three times stronger. Oh, okay. Exactly, so, and it's very hydrating. I'm just gonna put my timer on. So we're gonna time, again, depending on your brow hair, you can process for about 10 minutes for like, you know, lighter hair. If you have a little bit more medium coarse, you can go up to 12. And if you have very coarse, strong hair, you can process for 15 minutes. Okay, now you have an option as well uh, after about five minutes if you want to remove the, um, the plastic wrap and the heat quickly just to readjust the hair and reshape it into the shape, the desired look that you're looking for at the end. So it feels nice and it feels lovely and it's very relaxing. If you're doing this at home, you could just lie down at this part. But um, yeah, so who is brow lamination for? It's for anybody who, if somebody is very fine, like not a lot of brown hair, it's not really for you. Um, it's for anybody that would like a thicker, fuller looking brow. Maybe if they're edging on the side of, they don't really want to get microblading, but they want a bigger brow, it'll, because it's lifting your brows up. So it's going to make them appear fuller. It's also for clients uh, or uh, customers who have very coarse, thick, um, you know, strong, unruly hair. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, that they just want to soften that hair and tame it down again so they can just style it easier and it just sits, sits nicely. Um, so again, it's also really great for men. A lot of men are really getting into the brow lamination because they, they, they get kind of quite messy unruly brow hair and it'll just tame it down nicely I find, uh, from being a hairstylist that uh, a lot of men that comes into the salon their hair is so coarse that it doesn't stay up or across it goes right down and it mm -hmm. actually make their eyes look more smaller 
But yeah. when uh, the hair is trimmed, uh, it's like an eye opener uh, oh, for the look. Yeah. So, and it's a the amount of men that are getting into it. Yes. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's suitable for like, like mostly everybody except if you don't have, obviously if you don't have much brow hair, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work for you. But um, yeah. um, again, how much time did you say between how the processing time is? Oh yeah, okay. Um, so you're gonna leave it on, you can process it for five minutes and I like after five minutes, if you wanna check in on it, you can. Yeah. Um, but many you, and then you're gonna process it for another five minutes, so up to 10 minutes. Okay. If, if they have kind of, you know, similar eyebrows to me. If you've got like more brow hair, thicker, um, you're gonna to wanna to process it like up to 13 minutes, maybe 15. Okay. Um, you can check on it. So a good way of checking in on that is, and I would say suggest to somebody that does have a lot of brow hair and a lot of layers, they definitely want to get in there after five minutes and, and make sure they're getting to the underneath layers. And don't be afraid to apply more. I have some mixture left over. So when you check it after five minutes, get in there and apply some more if, if you feel it's needed on there. But um, yeah, so if, if they've got like, thicker hair they'll need to leave it longer and how they'll know is when you take that off to move it the hair should be very soft and pliable and just move whatever way you want it to move that's that's the whole idea and if they feel like that hair isn't completely softened yet um, and completely debonded then they just leave it on for another couple of minutes okay I actually did uh, my lashes uh, the other day and I absolutely love it. So it's the same product that you use for your brow lamination as uh, you do for your lashes. And I'll come closer to the um, camera so you can see. But um, the, the, the KLI or the Keraplex system that I use, um, it's just give the lashes like right up, just like I was using the uh, eyelash curlers. Definitely right. love it. It's amazing. Yeah. And like I said, it's just so simple to do at home yourself. Like. Yeah. Actually, more people are kind of doing this at home themselves. Like the lash, I met a mom at the playground the other day, collecting my kid from school, and I was like, "Oh, did you have a lash lift?" And she's like, "Yeah, she did it herself at home." Oh wow! <laughs> I find it's a bit harder. I did do it on myself, and I um, but I find it's a lot harder than the brow. The brow can be used for anyone that can do DIY, but the the, the lashes is a bit harder. Yeah, of course. And that's the thing. And you need patience. I, I'll actually, like, full disclaimer, I've never actually even done my own lash lift. And I think that's just out of pure, like, I don't really have the time to sit there and do it. And I just rather somebody else do it for me. But the brow is so easy to do yourself. Like, the lash lifting is a little bit dif different. Yes. It is a little bit harder. And you're working closer to the eye. So the brows, like I said, it's very easy to do the brows at home. How long has the, the Caraplex and the KLI been in the uh, industry, Paula? So the Caraplex is actually very new. That only came out last year, actually. It was a few months. And what the reason why it came out is because the manufacturer, first she developed the KLI, which is a, a the first and only thioglycoga acid-free system. But it, it takes a bit of a longer processing time because it's so gentle. Um, but then she wanted to create a quicker system that was a thio base, thioglycoga acid, which is the perm solution. But she wanted to formulate it in a way that it could be a healthy, a healthy one without damaging. And that's where this little bottle of magic gold comes in, because this is what helps to prevent any damage and repair and strengthen the hair from the inside out. So yeah, that's why she came out. And, and again, it's, it's the first and only unique system out there with a perm solution. How are you for time? You're five, five minutes. minutes. I'm just going to check on my uh, brows. Yeah. I'll give them a little check up to see how they're doing. So at this stage, if you have very coarse hair and um, you know that it is hard to take, it's good for you to lift it out and just reapply the product if you have to, or just kind of comb it up so that during the process of you putting the heat mask on, it didn't flatten it. And if you get any on your skin, like I just did, you can just wipe it off with a Q-tip. 
And is it harmful if it gets on the, uh, the, the surrounding skin, Paula? harmful um, and especially not with this one I've never noticed any redness or soreness where I have used you know the other traditional systems which they're quite harsh and aggressive and it's like when you put it on your skin would just be red you can see it's kind of burning the skin Even so you have to because you have to hmm? yes go ahead sorry yeah no you have to be careful because there's a lot of systems again out there that are designed just for lash lifting but those companies will promote it as a brow lamination too and they shouldn't be really going on the skin it has to be formulated specifically so this one is formulated specifically you know to be able to use on the skin because i know we're putting it on the hair but that hair is fine and a lot of it does touch the skin so I'm just going to get my heat Even up. if it's just five minutes, but you can see how my eyebrows is actually standing up and it looks fuller too. There we go. Back on there. So um, I find that when I do my eyebrow lamination, it actually makes my eyebrow look thicker. It's like a cheating kind yeah. of um, technique that makes the lash uh, sticks up. So it'll give me like a one eighth of an inch. Uh, and it's big on trend now though. Yes. This brushed up look and you see it on all the catwalks and all the influencers seem to be going around with this big brushed up brow look yes. it looks fabulous no it looks very nice and uh usually we back in the old days we have to use gel to like comb it up and then you know it and it resists and it could flop down but now it actually holds the style that like you're yeah basically styling your brows yeah, if you amazing. wanted to it's amazing so another five minutes so uh, Paula, I, I know there's so much brand out there that uh, people are using and buying like, online, even on eBay and Amazon. And people would ask the first thing, what uh, makes our brand different? Uh, obviously the price is a lot more than other brands. So what makes our brand stand out there? Well, you're paying for the quality of the ingredients that's in there. So basically those other brands, like you can get uh, like a lot cheaper. It's a very aggressive perm salt it can very damage, really damage your lashes unless you know what you're doing. But even at that, even if you know what you're doing, I've seen experienced technicians get very frustrated wondering why the damage, because it's, it, they have used a high percentage of thioglycoga acid. It's a very harsh perm salt. And some of those companies will use like the industrial grade. Like, so there's, because you know, there's different grades of thio and some are a lot stronger and a lot more aggressive. And, and you can tell when you open it too, that this smell really, really strong. So or is you're paying for the quality of the ingredients. And again, because we have all these special ingredients in there that's repairing from the inside, protecting the hair, making it three times stronger, um, hydrating it from the inside out, basically. Um, what do you mean by hydrating? Well, we, have, we actually have in our step one, there's hyaluronic acid. So we know that's a, you know, hyaluronic acid holds water in the hair and the skin. And so that's going to. So it doesn't uh, dry out like a perm. Like I, 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 I perm clients hair and sometimes the, uh, the hair feels so dry after. And we have to do a whole bunch of like treatments. So is yeah. that what you mean by this keeps the moisture in the hair? Exactly. And so what happens is as well, when people, if you're using traditional systems, you have to really try and keep nourishing the lash and brow hair for weeks after that treatment cause you're damaging it. It's getting very dehydrated, dry and brittle, like a perm in your head. I can't perm my hair, I wish I could because it's blonde and it would just be too much damage. So it's the same when you perm like your brow hair, if you're not, so we're treating it at the time of the perm so that we don't have to keep nourishing it afterwards to try and pre prevent all that damage or, or not prevent, undo the damage. We're preventing the damage at the time that we're doing the the chemical process so when you say damage what do people expect like what is damage damage it would be like you said very like if you perm your hair your very dry brittle hair if they really leave those solutions on too long like i mean they could lose their hair um hair whirl up like frizz up yeah like dried. yeah okay dried and frizzled and it could be frizzy and the ends go all odd and yes. but you don't have that with this so I think we're, are we good yep. for our my 10 minutes up. Okay. Hi. Yeah, and like I said, if you have a lot more brow hair than me, you could go a little longer with your, your timings. And when you come, when you're doing your step five, after five minutes, when you're coming in there to check in on it, um, just do that quickly. You don't want to keep 
first a minute too much with the heat off. You want to just do it quickly for a minute and get the heat back on there. So now everything is just dry removed, right? We're not washing it off with water at all. No, we will not wash anything off with water. And you can see there how easy my hair is just- Look at my eyebrows. It looks yeah. thicker. Yeah, and, it's, <laughs> and it actually looks fuller and standing up. Oh, wow. So is it mine? I just love this treatment. So this, you can see it for my eyebrows it took because see how it's standing up right here? Mm. And even on the ends of my uh, brows, you can still see it's, it's more moldable, like more control. It's not flopping down. So I'm same as I'm just sweeping all these up. Now ignore all my little fine blondy hairs. I am going to, oh, every time I do this, I'm just like, oh my goodness, it's just my favorite thing. I've actually had clients like that too, who they never heard of brow lamination. And like now that it's a thing, they're just like, this is, it's like their go-to. They're like, I cannot live without this. <laughs> So when you're removing that at that stage, like I said, I like some people like you might see things online where there's like crazy like brow hair just like up like this. If you like that look, go for it. This is at the, like I said, the time where you can just style them however you like. So you can go straight up. I like them kind of sweeped a little bit, more mm -hmm. of, a kind of a softer feminine look. But eat, you can style them whatever way you like them to sit. So just get that off, dry remove it. Don't use your gel cleanser, just brush up. So that's dry removed. And then you're gonna come in with your step two, which is the perfecter. And this one has some diamond extract in there for some extra shine and hydration again. So how many pumps would uh, someone need? Uh, for this one, probably just two. Or like you wanna make sure you get a good bit on there as well. So I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm going to do one little pump per eye, well, per eyebrow. But this is, you'll notice it's a lot thicker and creamier and it's, it's fabulous. So just get that on there again, nice and quick. And then this eye. So let's say if someone did the first step and they didn't, they skipped this step, what would happen, Paula? It's not going to lift because you need this to neutralize the first step, you know, to make, set it all in place. Okay. So this is like your, your finishing and your neutralizer. And then with this one, so again, you're going to put your plastic, your little cling film on, set it to the brow hair, and then your heat. And then you're gonna process this one for five to eight minutes, but you could do the eight. It's not gonna, so I'm gonna get my timer on there. So if someone uh, was very allergic and they worry about uh, before, like they have never tried this product before, uh, where would they test uh, for the allergic reaction, Paula? Yeah, excellent question. Um, so they can test um, either right behind the earlobe here. So you're just going to, any of the products that you're going to use, you're just going to dab a little bit on and for whatever length of time, you know, just put it on for about 10 minutes, 12 minutes. And then after 10 minutes, just remove it and leave it 24 hours. And you, you'll know if you, you know, are reacting to it, it'll get red and swollen and itchy. You can also test it in the crook of your elbow here or just on your wrist. So any of those places you can test it and just uh, give it like 24 hours before you go ahead with the rest of the treatment. And also as well, like this, this is just a DIY video to do at home. Like this isn't going to, this isn't like one of our courses where you learn how to, where you can go in and work in a salon with this. You know, we do have proper courses for that style if somebody wants to become a, a technician but just so anyone knows this isn't just like a course it's just a DIY to help you out at home but yeah our courses go th more thoroughly into the products and the science behind the products and any sort of contraindications um, and then step-by-step -step treatment lots of lots of stuff but if you if you never need to know anything about that reach out to Kelly she's great at um, educating 
I got a good teacher when I uh, took <laughs> it. It definitely helps a lot, Paula. Okay, so so how long do you, we put this on, Paula? You it on for about eight minutes. It's okay. five to eight. Again, if you've really like, you know, light, fine hair, like five minutes should do, but you know, it's, it's again, it's not gonna do any damage. So you can process up to even eight. Okay. So, now, sorry, go ahead. Would you like me to tint my brows today too? Please, please show us how to tint. Okay. Um, well, while this is processing, I'm going to mix up my tint. Okay. So again, if somebody's at home and they're purchasing, if you know, if you're not a, an esthetician or a beautician, you probably can't purchase a lot of tints. But I do know the drugstore brands um, sell ones for at home use also. Do you sell them, uh, Paula? Sorry. Do you sell them? Um, I uh, not at the moment. We've none in stock, but we are. We are talking to a, a wholesaler about um, getting some tins in. I'm just, I'm in the testing phase. I'm testing which ones I, I want to stock. But for today, I just have reflective sale. But like I said, if, if you are just doing this at home yourself and you pick up a tint in the drugstore, just follow the guidelines, yes, of what it says. So every, every tint, every manufacturer has different guidelines. So you need to just follow what they're saying. Um, with the reflectocell, it's just a ratio of one to one. So we're just going to pop that on. So you don't need a whole lot. So with tinting, can you explain that? Does it actually change someone's hair color? So for example, if my hair is like, uh, you know, dark brown and I'm, I want to lighten it a little bit because of my hair color and I put a light brown on a uh, tint, does that change or no? So are you saying going from a dark brown to a light brown? Yes. Um, you, well, with that, you'd have to um, get like, you know, you'd have to bleach the hair first to get it like blonde and then do the light brown over it. Because okay. it's very easy to go darker, but to go lighter, it's a little bit more, um, a little bit more work. So when I, so, so basically with the lash or the brow tint, it's mostly depositing color, not lifting color, correct? Exactly, it's depositing color now, but we have like, I mean, you can lift the color out of it, like, like you do with the hair, you know, you just yeah. you have to bleach it first and yeah. then the lighter brown in. But really with this, it's, we're using it to just darken the hair. Okay. Um, so, and that's the thing too, if you have any color in your brow hair, they, um, if you have color in your brow hair, the lamination will strip that color out. Yes. Just add, add it back in. So what we're doing today is a DIY, but if someone wanted to take a course, how, how would that work? Uh, where would they go and uh, apply if they want to take a course and become an um, um, brow and uh, lash um, artist? Yeah, well, we have some online courses. Um, I'm not sure if you have your Zoom courses on there too, but um, with ours, is it's, if you just go to pqbeauty.ca, mm -hmm. um, there's a list of courses on there or if somebody just wants to reach out and email me personally, or if they want to train with you, just reach out to you and you can train them. Uh, here in Toronto, I prefer uh, to do like a in-person class. I find it's always better, especially for students that because you're working in a salon with clients and it become a profession. So I prefer them getting proper training than just over Zoom. Um, yeah. Um, and if, um, if they're look, when they take a course, if, do they get certificate and certified Everything as well, Paula? Certified at the end of it. And again, like you said, uh, for and if somebody's already lash, used to lash lifting their brow lamination, that's when the online courses are probably better. But like I said, for beginners, it's, it's great to do in person because you'll never get that experience online and you have somebody right there to show you. So in person is better. But yeah, they get everything, everything they need to know to get started. Um, and then it comes with their certificate at the end. I think my time might be up. Almost of about 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. 
So after we use the uh, brow lift, coloring it does not irritate it or harm it at all, correct? Oh no, it doesn't. No, and you know what you could even do with this special, you could, that ingredient again, if you want, you could put one little drop of that into your tint. The Caroplex. Yeah, yep. One of, a little drop in with your tint. And again, that's gonna again, protect your hair again oh. from any further damage, which is great. I'm excited to see my brows again because uh, <laughs> I did a few weeks ago and, and uh, now it's, it's oh yes, important question. How long does this last? Oh yes, well everybody's different but it could be between four to six weeks. Okay. So everyone's brown hair grows faster so they'll know themselves once they're brushing it up if it's not as soft and pliant but unless their new hair is grown in so they can do it again but you, you, you shouldn't really need to do it before four weeks. If someone does it and it, it stop it uh it stop after like three to three three to two three weeks what does that mean that they're doing wrong um if it if it hasn't lifted well if well, it lifts it lifts but it didn't last as long as four to six weeks what can possibly oh yeah so do you want them to be like not using any sort of oily or, or anything oily on the skin uh, on their eyebrows i'm just going to remove this because my time is up but um yeah so they need to be not putting any oily stuff um, on there because it could just probably drop the hair and don't be you know aggressively you know scrubbing or washing anything like that could um, you know drop drop the lift okay but other than that um, no it should definitely last them up to four weeks unless they have a very fast growth cycle and their okay. hair grows oh look at that oh. so pretty <laughs> your lashes look, looks fuller my lash, yeah, yeah it's, lash like, lash. it's like an instant eye lift, like an eye bra a brow lift. It is. Yes. Well, that's it, we're actually lifting them all up. So I'm just going to dry remove that. Oh, I just love when I get this done. Um, yeah, I just need to tidy the rest of my eyebrows. <laughs> what? Oh. How? How early age can someone start? Like I know a lot of teenage girls now love to doll themselves up. So what's the age uh, that can start this? Well, as long as they get their parents' consent, you know, they can start. I mean, you don't want to be doing too young, but like 16 is a good age. But, you know, these days you have 13 and 14 year olds and 15 year olds. And again, as long as their parents are um, OK with them doing it, it's fine. But just follow the guidelines, you know, and if you're following the instructions step by step, like I said, you're going to be OK. But really, those young girls anyway have nice full brows at the moment. So they, um, oh, sorry, I just have one person coming to collect some product. Give me um, one second. Okay, no problem. Hi, guys. So uh, I look so funny right now, or I may look funny in the video because for some reason, when I'm recording on Zoom, uh, the camera kind of freezes. So if I have weird, awkward moments, uh, please disregard that. Sorry, that was just somebody coming to pick up some Curplex. <laughs> okay, so tint. So when you dry remove this, are you ready for your tint? Are you tinting? I still have a few minutes. So okay, let's try first. Um, but yeah, so what I can say, but those younger teenagers, really, they've got good full brows, like, already. But, like, if they do want to follow the trend, again, just make sure their parents are there. and Maybe the mom is helping them with it, but... Really under 16, I don't think they should. Yes. This water. But you know yourself what teenagers are like. And <laughs> you say no to them, they're just going to want it even more. Okay. So I do feel the heat. So those of you who are doing this, do expect to feel the heat. It shouldn't be burning hot, but you should feel the heat. It's not just like a cool, warming sensation. Uh, it no. needs heat to activate, okay? So just so you know and you're not surprised. And then it feels lovely as well, you know, you put that on there. My skin is actually very sensitive and you know what, I've used this product, um, the Caraplex or KLI and no problem at all, very mild, like, and it delivers really well. I've used other ones in the past, you know, when I'm always testing stuff um, and I would be red, raw, 
like from the harsher solutions. So this one again, like, and I've really sensitive skin. Like you can see how pale I am. I go red really easily and I have like literally no, nothing, um, no redness, no, no irritation. Okay, I'll just, just start applying this. Okay, yep. my time is up. Because with the, like I would say as well, with the, if you're tinting as well, just, you know, kind of create the little outline here first. We don't want to come in with a lot. You nearly want to just brush it nicely in, you know, to give like that, still have that kind of stroke sort of look. I look think that's so thick my eyebrows is. Super, oh, wow. super love it. Look okay. So now we're just going to dry remove. You can even use a um, Q-tip, which is a cotton swab, just to be faster. And again, still always in an upward, upward motion. Okay. Yeah. You always on what you're doing. It in may look um, a bit like those of you who are new to this. Like I'm used to seeing my eyebrows like this every time I do it, so I'm used to it. But if you are new and uh, you see all of a sudden your eyebrow stands up and you have a fuller eyebrow. Don't be afraid, it will not stand like this uh, forever because once you wash them, uh, once you wash your face after 48 hours, the hair will become more relaxed, right? And then after that, you can comb it or you can style it any way you like. So right now you may see my eyebrows standing up like this and it may not be something that you're used to, but don't worry, it won't stay like this um, if you don't want it to, because you can style your eyebrows after, which is the point of this brow lamination is so that you can control and tame your unruly eyebrows. I'm glad you touched on that, Kelly, because yeah, and, and likewise for people who get up the next day and their brow hair is not up and it's kind of relaxed down and they think, oh, it didn't work. It did. Your hair is going to come down like that. It's softening the hair, but once you brush it up, you can style it back into place. So I'm just going to tidy up these corners. So right now I'm just putting uh, the brow tint on my brows. Okay. And again, so with the tint as well, um, I don't leave mine on too long because because your hair has been laminated as well. It's it's that color is going to grab a lot faster to your hair. So you you know depending yeah. on what kind of look you want, if you don't want it too dark. Yes, just, your hair is already a porous, so therefore it'll grab the color very quickly. And again, if you happen to leave it on, so these are some troubleshooting. If you do leave it on for a bit long and it's getting too dark, um, again, washing it, um, like for example, sometimes with my clients or even for me, if I put it on too dark and leave it too long and my eyebrows get too um, dark uh, after the first time, I can, it's not recommend that you wash it after because it will affect your brow lamination but there are ways to troubleshoot if your brows get too dark. But, on, but honestly, it's not that it's dark, it's just that you're not used to seeing yourself with such defined eyebrows. So just give it a couple of days to sit on it and you, your eyes will get used to it. Exactly, and I say that, and just wait for you when you initially wash your hair after those 48 hours, you'll be surprised with the amount of how it'll lighten as well. Yes. Uh, and I've had, I've had like clients who get up straight away and they're like, because oh, their brows, like you said, they're so much fuller and thicker. They might be in, like, and then they look in the mirror a couple of times, and then like in a matter of minutes, they start to get used to it. And then they love it so much that they just yeah. keep coming back. But yeah, sometimes for that first day or two, you might, it might just take you some time to get used to looking at it. But trust me, you'll love it after that. So um, my eyebrows has actually been um, permanent makeup. So I did uh, microblading and shading. So even if you had all those beauty uh, service done, you can still use uh, brow lift. Is that correct? 
Oh yeah, I've, I've had laminate art microblading done underneath mine too. So, and it's good. And I, again, a lot of my clients, they already have previously microbladed the brows, but they, you know, it still doesn't fluff them up or give them that brushed up look. They still need that extra. Plus I think, you know, when they've had a couple of microblades, they can't continue to do because the scar tissue and some of them might find it a bit painful and they don't keep going over it and over it. So that's when the brow lamination comes in handy. And if someone is new to this, would they get the brow lamination first or would they do the um, uh, microblading first? I would suggest if you're thinking about microblading because you want a fuller brow, try the lamination first because it might be the solution and then you might need to not need to go down that end. And that's why a lot of people get the lamination. They're afraid of the microblading and they don't necessarily want to take that route. Um, so this is why this is an excellent way, because if even if you have gaps you want to fill in, you can manipulate the hair and kind of shape it in to cover those gaps. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let me see. Also, I'm just trying to think that might be dark enough for me. So I'm leaving my eye for about five minutes. So uh, can you tell me who makes the KLI and the keratin uh, system? Yes, um, so we have manufacturers in the States, which is good. So it's only coming from USA and it's, it's used a small batch manufacturer. So everything is tested like to the highest quality, like it's made in small batches. Um, you know, so it's not this big manufacturing company coming from China, like, you know, like I said, because she's so small as well, the quality of her ingredients are just, they're second to none. I mean, and, you know, maybe for people doing a DIY at home, they might not say as much, but like clients or students and te other technicians that I've worked at, once you start to see these products compared to what you've used in the past, you can tell, you can 100% tell the difference. And like with my clients who've had other treatments done, when I use this, these sort of treatments on them, they can also tell the difference in their lash and brow health as well, because it yeah. doesn't feel as dry. And, and, you know, it actually can help promote some growth because we're conditioning and strengthening them. I'm coming closer to the camera. Can you see my lashes, Paula? Oh, yes, I can. Isn't that this, this is Asian lashes for you. Wow, that's and, amazing. And it lasts 24 seven. I can go swimming, go anything. Before, when I would use the um, uh, the typical uh, lash curler, um, I would be afraid to go to the gym or go swimming because my lash would go straight down. But this is um, the KLI lash system that I just did a few days ago and love it to pieces. Love it. Fabulous. Yes. So we're going to dry, I've just dry removed my tint. Um, and I'm just going to come in with that cleanser if I need to kind of, oh, sorry. I'm just going to try not. What? Yeah, that one. I'm just cleansing in underneath. You know, if you feel like you really are the, you want to remove some of that tint, you can put a little bit on your lash. But I try not to put too. I just want to style them up. And for someone who is new, does the tint actually stain the skin or just the hair itself? Just the hair. If it is left on quite a long time, it will stain some of the skin but honestly it won't stay on the skin so once they wash their brows after the 48 hours it's going to totally come off the skin yeah but it's funny so the dye the, 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 um, the dye that I'm looking the tint that I'm looking to get in that I, I've ordered to test it out on myself first it's actually it's a tint but it's similar to henna okay so it will stay in the skin so that I'm very excited to try. Now you guys will have to excuse me today because I do need to shape my brows properly, which I will- They look beautiful from the camera, Paula. <laughs> um, yeah, so again, if, if anyone has any questions, should they wax or tweeze or tread after this? You can, like, I mean, if you, that's why you don't want any of the solution down on your skin. Make sure you wipe it off if it gets on there because, you know, so that you, you, if you do want to wax on over it, um, or you can just tweeze out those hairs, or you can tread them. But if you find you got irritated um, from the solution for any reason, or it was left on too long and your skin is red and irritated, don't wax. Just just leave it a day or two and just tidy up with, with the um, 
with your tweezers. So what do you think of my eyebrows, guys? Fabulous. They're so nice. Look at that. They look so much fuller. So much fuller. They're gorgeous. So again, for those of you who uh, have not um, um, had brow lamination done before, it may feel like very, um, you know, wow at first. But once you step back, give it a few minutes or hours to just look at it, and it will look very beautiful. It will. And like I said, even just give it a day or two when, when that relaxes back down, you have full control over how you want to style it yourself. Um, yeah, full control. So you just, just leave it and you can burn them up more. You can bring them to the side. You can do whatever. So basically it's just allowing you to style the hair as you want it. Is it just me or my screen is getting blurry, Paula? Uh, yeah, I'm getting blurry, I think. So strange. It's, it's weird. Um, so anyway, we are on Zoom and I only have an hour limit. So we have about five more minutes uh, with our guests, uh, our audience today. Any uh, last uh, recommendation, last you know, things you wanna share with our uh, viewers? Well, if somebody was wondering like afterwards, do they condition with their brow? You can, if you want to make them uh, grow more too. It's not, like I said, we're, we're not damaging them. This is a treatment, so it's good for them. But like, you know, we have other solutions as well that you can put on your brows daily to kind of, you know, I suppose, complement the lift to let you get your hair to grow longer. Oh, what is the aftercare, uh, Paula? Oh, yes, aftercare. Wait 48 hours before you wet your brows. That goes with steam. So if you're having a body shower and not washing your hair, just don't have it piping hot so all the steam will come up. So keep them dry for 48 hours. And then after that, just like I said, we have some products I call Care Boost. That's good if you want to help grow your eyebrow hair more. But after that, just brush them up in the morning. If you use a bit of gel, just brush them up with a little bit of gel like this and shape them however way you want to shape them. And then they'll just stay styled. Nice. So 48 hours, no moisture. 48 hours, no moisture. Okay. And that means, yeah, and keep creams or anything. So just basically keep that brown hair dry for 48 hours. If someone hours. has to go to work and they have to wear makeup, uh, what like, is it oil free or oil based that way they use to clean the, their face? Yeah, that you recommend? Yeah, if they're using anything oily, again, just avoid the brow area. So if you're going to work and you put your makeup on, that's fine. Just leave your brow area free. Um, but like I said, and then after the 48 hours, just put a bit of gel, gel in them to hold them. Great. So I will definitely leave uh, Paula's uh, website below. So if you have any questions regarding the products, uh, so she does uh, provide um, Caraflex and KLI as well. So, um, and also courses, right, Paula? Also courses as well. Yeah. So we have them online or if somebody doesn't want to take it online, I can do it via Zoom with them if they want to be kind of live. Um, so we've lots of options, but always just email me if you need to know anything and I can talk you through. And we do have a sale on the, these brow lamination products as well today. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good deal for, for what you get. But yeah, if anybody has any questions at all, just, just message me. Uh, this is uh, from my personal review. Um, as you know, um, I've, I, I'm, I'm a hair stylist and also a makeup artist. So I've done a lot of courses and then meet a lot of educators, but Paula is one of a kind, very patient, very sweet, uh, she will go out her way for you. And, and she, if you can imagine that this is the fifth take of this uh, tutorial DIY that we have because of my techno technical um, thing, web, uh, laptop and all that stuff going wrong. And this is the fifth time that she's been working with me to do the same video. You can see how patient and uh, very, very supportive Paula is. So if anyone is um, interested in taking this on this career, brow, lamina brow lamination and lash lift, honestly, I would recommend Paula any day. So um, she taught me, uh, she, I, I was uh, certified by her. So a great teacher. And uh, unfortunately we can't uh, meet each other because of COVID, but I hope to one day meet you and uh, probably um, have you over to Toronto. We can host a class when things open up. That would be amazing. Yeah. I would love that. And you know what? In a way, I'm glad it took us five girls because it just gets me gets to see you for a full time. <laughs> that beautiful place. It just means that you're very patient, Paula. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Kelly. It was lovely to see you again. Thanks for having me on.
Yeah, so thank you everyone for watching. We will definitely do more videos sharing our beauty tips like this with you guys. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, comment below, and let us know what you think. And so we'll be happy to see you in the next videos that we do to share beauty tips. Perfect. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you so much, Paula. Stay safe. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.